Righto, Rob, and there's the uh, start of the build-up of the uh, crowd here today. It'll be a very big crowd around about the uh, quarter past two, half past two uh, mark. They come pretty late here to uh, Sandringham, particularly the uh, locals. But now, let's have a look at the association uh, ladder as it stands at the moment. In first division, we have Port Melbourne on top. Both uh, sides have the same number of wins. They've lost one game each. That's Port Melbourne and Sandringham, but Port have the uh, bigger... Uh, percentage uh, there, then Preston in third, Coburg fourth, and right down on the bottom is uh, Brunswick. Let's look at the second division ladder. Camberwell being defeated last week are still out there on uh, top by one clear game, and um, Waverley, of course, only that one game behind them, but a very, very high percentage. Sunshine, the team on the bottom. And now, uh, let's uh, have a look at the teams as, uh, well, before we have a look, yes, we'll have a look at the teams as selected on Saturday night, the home team, Ted. On yes. Thursday night, rather, on than Saturday. <laughs> now, they do select on a Thursday night, uh, Phil, and probably have a run on the Saturday and confirm the side, particularly where they've got any doubts. But that centre-half forward is obviously Elf Buse and not Betts, as we have there. So, that's Elf Buse, B-E-U-S, uh, lining up at centre-half forward. But as Phil mentioned before, I, I also believe that Buse will line up at full-back. But yet, yet to be uh, to wait and see. I've been informed by the Sandringham Cam, Phil, that is the team. That is how they will line up. And that, to the uh, knowledge of Brian Douglas, the secretary, there has been no number changes. Righto, and uh, let's check off the Port Melbourne side. Yes, looking at the Port Melbourne side, we see the inclusion this week of their captain and coach, uh, Gary Bryce, on the half-forward flank. But uh, don't be surprised, Phil, if he lines up on the interchange bench and uh, Glenn Evans, who normally plays in that position that Bryce has today, uh, I think Evans probably could line up on the half-forward flank. But there we find, you mentioned the Sandringham goal-to-goal -goal line. Well, there's nothing wrong with that one when you look at those players. Peter Hall, Dermot, Bill Swan, great game last week, also O'Reilly, and Fred Cook, who must strike it soon, Phil. They always keep Evans in... Um a funny position because it's always Evans who's the player dragged off on interchange so I've noticed over the last well, few Well it's the graveyard of any football team as a half forward flank field it has uh, ever since I can remember and uh, usually you find the player that uh, suffers the axe is probably the player that's been on the half forward flank, one of the most difficult positions to play. But anyway uh, that's how they should line up today Phil. Right, there are other interesting games being played in first division today so let's have a look at them. Brunswick at home to Dandenong, uh, then the home sides Caulfield, Geelong West and Frankston in second division, the home sides, Waverley, Mordialic, Yarraville, Werribee and uh, Camberwell. And I'd say, really, it's an <coughs> ideal day for football. It's overcast, the cloud very high, very cool, and uh, I think we're um, in for a rainless free day, although I think the forecast did say earlier uh, periods of rain, but it's uh, changed by the look of it. It says fine now with cloudy periods, gusty northerly winds and the current temperature is 13 degrees. Just waiting on the teams to make their appearance. There's the lineup up of the young mascots for the Sandringham side. This game due to start at 10 minutes past two. BFA signs in the 10 past two is the official sign, and of course this is First Division Football in VFA on Channel 10. Wayne Gray, they call him, of, um, of VFA football, the big fisherman. And he's the one that uh, will cause a lot of damage. He looks fit enough, Bill, doesn't he? Generally stands it. Comments then from Bill Jacobs of 3AW. <laughs> well, he's sounding off a bit there too, I think, as he was coming down with the team. Yes, there he is. Telling a young fellow uh, how to play it. That was mailing. Terry Wilkins, uh, of course, very tattooed uh, gentleman. Played football in Darwin a couple of seasons ago. And there's Fred Cook. A lot will depend on him. Got a smack in the, across the nose last week at Preston very early in the game. And uh, seemed to quieten him down a bit for the uh, the game. But both sides very keen. And uh, Vic Annanson, the big fellow there. I, uh, I just wonder whether Gary Bryce is going to take part in this game from the outset. He's wearing his tracksuit top. There's nothing unusual about that. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he took up a position on the bench. Yeah, well, I build and looking at Glenn Evans, he's got no tracksuit top on. Right. And, and Wilkins, Sandringham has won the toss. And uh, Sandringham will kick to uh, the southern or right of our screen, uh, which uh, no wind uh, 
favouring either end today. Quite a still day, but uh, uh, first uh, blood to Sandringham by winning the toss. Right, now just checking with the uh, captains. He's checked with Terry Wilkins, checked over here. And now the signal to the timekeepers, and the bull tourney comes in for the bounce of the ball in the VFA match of the day. And there it goes, Annanson moves in, Sims went in, but Annanson got the knockout from the ruck, tapped it on again, Wilkins tried to get it away, the umpire says, holding the ball, and the free kick will be taken by Kavanagh, but he goes for the hand pass to Swan, Swan sends it up towards the half-forward line, racing in after it is Grant O'Reilly, taps it and puts it over the line, with Northern's favour. Sims goes up uh, with O'Reilly, neither one of them get the advantage with the knockout, but the umpire indicating that there is a free kick there, which will be taken by O'Reilly of uh, Port Melbourne. So O'Reilly, Port Melbourne expected to be the on top early, as they were last week against Preston, and then had difficulties in the, in the final quarter. Sandringham have always had the ability, this year anyway, to be able to come home late in the game. Well now, there he uh, puts it on its way. It's not a bad kick either. The goalpost was moved, but it's gone through for full points and first blood to the Burroughs. Port Melbourne one goal, and Sandringham have yet to score. Coming up as John Christo overruns it, and uh, picking it up or trying to is Bradbury. Couldn't handle the ball at all around the neck, and it's a free kick to Gilmore of Sandringham. Gilmore going for the short pass, and he gets it to his teammate and O'Brien. O'Brien lines him up, there's Hunt going up fast to take the mark. Grabs the ball and then bang, straight through for full points to Sandringham. Fortunate there, Port, I felt. Swan will deliver the ball out to centre wing and sitting back Evans. Quickly onto a Bayer, speed into Port Melbourne's forward line. Cook coming from there, knocked away. Cook in again, unable to take the ball away in the pack forms. Umpire has seen a trip, and the free kick O'Reilly's won. Port Melbourne 1-1, O'Reilly kicked that goal for Port Melbourne from the right forward pocket earlier in the game. It's at the seven minute mark now, and Port Melbourne lead by the solitary point. Port Melbourne. Very toey about this big game, Port. Very toey in the rooms at the start, or before the start. O'Reilly blowing them up. That's another goal. Port 2-1, Sandringham a goal. Up towards the centre wing position, too far for Sims, but Adams is there. Here's the call from O'Brien, and O'Brien will have to make pace. The hand pass was ineffective, but O'Brien will go in again to get it to Adams at centre half forward, and now it's two out. Hunt, and Hunt wins it. No good, Peter Hall. You're not going to beat him with playing from the side. He's got to be in front. And there's the coach, Gary Bryson. He knows what the problem is. It's going to be very hard to keep down, that's for sure. And Peter Hall's got the toughest job on the ground, I would think. And Hunt uh, has kicked the only goal for Sandringham. And he's now kicked the second. Sandringham, two goals, caught 2-2. Two, two. On the beach or the bay side at the moment. There's the knock by O'Reilly going forward for Horton Melbourne. And Kavanagh grabs the ball. He's in the forward pocket position. He'll line up the big sticks and puts it right through the middle for a goal to Port Melbourne. <laughs> Gary Price, elated at this stage, certainly playing today, but uh, on the bench. Position, Cook in front. Can he take it? No, he has it sharped away by Pledger. In fact, he's got so much time, he'll take a bounce. Now he has a kick, and it's O'Reilly who comes in, sharking the ball in front of Sims. O'Reilly playing a great game. That's his sixth kick, according to Ian Gibbs, our statistician. There's the kick down to the scoring zone. Fred Cook having a great battle there and a good mark to Fred Cook. Fred Cook out positioning and out thought. Good tactics there against Alf Buse. Buse on the mark. Freddie Cook, a picture of concentration. There's the mark again. Oh, beautiful tactics, Fred Cook. There's the kick by Cook. Umpire says four points to Port Melbourne. In the trainer's hands, it goes wide at the centre. Sims came in, tried to take the mark, couldn't do so. It's the Port Melbourne players going in hard. Saru Port holding the ball. And the free kick to be taken here by O'Brien of Santon Hammer. The 15 metre penalty uh, being applied. It's Christo. John Christo of Port Melbourne. All right, there it goes towards that centre-forward zone, and again, uh, Cook 
outmaneuvering his opponent, using a lot of strength, which is typical of the Fred Cook play, has taken the mark only 10 metres out from goal. Port Melbourne starting to get right on top. Cook right in front, kicking towards the northern end of the ground. And he's put it through for another one to Port Melbourne, taking them on to five goals, three, as against Sandringham's two goals straight. Well, Port Melbourne uh, playing really well at the moment, Ted. And there goes the kick on its way. A little bit of frustration coming into Sandringham's game. Way is the player to pass it out here, straight to his teammate and Adams. Adams to Mailing. Mailing lines him up, puts the ball on its way, and one metre by Sandringham to take them on the three. Across there to half forward. There was a chance for Mannix, but intercepted by Anderson. And Anderson will take some catching. Goes up to the centre, then across to Brown. Uh, Wilkinson through the centre half forward spot looking for Cook and Cook not quite then yes he has it's a goal to Cook <laughs> trying to take the crown of the top full forward from him and Cook is going to respond to that it's out of the centre a chance for Chapman blocked there very well by uh, Thompson into it again and Thompson out with the hand pass straight to Adams Adams from centre half forward is going to put it very close it's through so they're coming thick and fast. But All right, uh, to Rob Aspel. 16 points is the, the margin here. Plenty of exciting encounters. And it's Port Melbourne leading. But Mannix now handballs out to the forward pocket position. There's the kick by Chapman. And the umpire says full points. And another goal to Sandringham. Much needed. The kick for Sandringham. A big driving kick by Sims. Right down to the uh, centre-half forward position. Going up his hut. He can't take the ball. Coming through is Christo. Christo, Jim Christo. Handballs across to uh, Wilkinson. Wilkinson for Port Melbourne. Borks then gives a short pass across to Anderson. He can't take it. Let Sandringham in now. Gilmore across to uh, Wilkins. Across to Way. Way takes it. Now he'll line up the big sticks. There's his kick. Right in towards the teeter goal. And the umpire says full points. What a thrilling game we have, Ted. It's a magnificent game of football, as I said earlier. We find our 11th goal has been kicked for the quarter now, and uh, changes being made too by the ending uh, defence, where Mark Saru has gone to full back. And there we find Way. Very cool then, uh, player coming at him, but very cool in his approach to goal. Full points once more for Sandringham for their sixth. Fingers to it first, but uh, there's the kick now by Adams, right down to the full forward position. Oh, players going up everywhere. Desperate uh, defence there. Demetrio's in there. Now it's a uh, handball out from uh, Wilkins. Wilkinson, and the umpire has found the free kick. Ted, what did you think of that? Holding the ball, there was no doubt about that one. The head was caught clean, and uh, I didn't think it was Hunt's free kick. No, it's not. It's coming back to the player who tackled him, that was Chapman. Yes, I think Rex would have liked to have taken it, though. No doubt. Let's have a look at it again. Yes, no doubt about it. There's the kick now by Chapman from the penalty, right through, and four points to Sandringham, who have hit the front. Evans is in there trying to gain possession, but it's kicked by Drosher back in towards the centre. Bradbury is the player in the band now. Bradbury trapping the ball, will get the hand pass into Wilkinson. Wilkinson and Port back to Bradbury. Bradbury from the half forward line with a left foot kick, and look, it's all Port Melbourne as O'Reilly comes out to take the mark at centre half forward. He would swan the best player on the ground. He's kicked 2 1. As we have a look at this again, going across to O'Reilly. Drosher a little bit late in coming in to try and negate um, that attacking move. Now uh, O'Reilly lining him up with his eighth kick coming up towards the northern end of the ground. Puts it on its way and it's not accurate or is it? Yes, it's through for full points to Port Melbourne. Umpire giving a free kick that was in the back to uh, Evans. And he gets the free on the outer wing position, tries to get around opponents, successfully does it, and then sends it towards the right forward pocket, and Fred Cook leading in the race for the ball has taken the mark in front of Saru. As the siren goes for the end of the first quarter, Cook now getting ready to line them up. He's within scoring range, on an angle, about two metres in from the boundary line, puts it high in the air, well off target that one. And there it is, the first quarter over with Port Melbourne 7-4, leading Sandringham seven goals straight, comments from Bill Jacobs. It was a good first quarter. At the 22-minute mark, uh, Port Melbourne were holding a 15-point lead, and the Sandringham defence decided to tough it out. They bit the bullet. 
and there were a couple of biffs went on up on the uh, forward line for Port Melbourne. They lost poise for a while. Sandringham recovered, piled on goals, and uh, caught Port nearly by, I think they're only about four points ahead uh, uh, behind uh, Port Melbourne. Then Port came back in the latter stages of the quarter and they did well and they hold an advantage of four points. But they don't want to fall for the trap. They've fallen for it once this quarter and they might fall for it again if some of the hotter heads in the Port Melbourne camp aren't subdued. But it was a great quarter of football. Port de deserved their lead. They had the two best players on the ground in O'Reilly and Swan. And if they continue to uh, control those positions, I think they can go in at half-time with the lead. Well, Bill Jacobs has selected uh, Port Melbourne. Ted Hedries uh, has selected Sandringham. So you'll hear a Sandringham summary. Well, Phil, it was a, uh, Bill said it was a good quarter of football. It's one of the best quarters of football I've seen for a long while. We saw a good high mark and we saw a play on type of football provided by Port Melbourne and we saw, saw 14 goals scored and that's what the public want to see. They'll love to see the goals scored. I thought that uh, probably Sims and Annanson nullified each other at the centre, but Bill Swan, a brilliant player, a good player last week also, was picking up crumbs around that middle. He was completely beating Terry Wilkins, the Sandringham captain, and he was giving his forwards plenty of opportunities and he had a winner there at centre half forward, Grant Riley, they're probably their second best player last week, so their two best players last week are firing again today. Well, O'Reilly did the best. He kicked their first two goals. Cook has come right back into calculations once again. It looks like the old vintage Fred Cook up there today, the way he's moving around competing for, against his opponent for marks, and he's kicking fairly truly too. Sandingham Phil, as I said, during the uh, first quarter, they uh, really came back into the calculations in this game when that bit of an altercation up there with Vic Annanson, and from that point on, Sandingham put on three quick goals and they're back in business again. Ted, um, I eulogised uh, before the game started about the goal-to-goal -goal line of uh, Sandringham and I think they're being beaten in their goal-to-goal -goal line. Cook is playing better at full forward. Peter Hall has picked up his game at full back and Wilkins is certainly being beaten in the centre. And uh, we have O'Reilly winning at centre-half forward. And I think that's where Port Melbourne are on top. I agree with you that uh, the rucks are about even, but it's the goal-to-goal -goal line of Port Melbourne that has lifted and is winning the game for them at the moment. Rob? Yes, well, Phil, I uh, selected uh, Sandringham, but I must admit, uh, uh, around about the 10-minute mark, I was having second thoughts about it. But Sandringham can thank their accuracy for only being four points down at this stage. To my money, uh, Sandringham's defence has just got to tighten up a lot. They've let Port Melbourne in at the crucial stage for s some very easy goals, and that's taking nothing away from Fred Cook, who has certainly come back today and, sh and uh, shown us that he's still a great player. But Swan in the centre has been right on top, and he's one of the main reasons that uh, Port Melbourne have a very, uh, well, only four points, but uh, considering the uh, scoring shots, what's that, uh, 11 shots to seven, and Sandringham seven goals, Swan has got, had a lot to do with that. Right, Ian, statistics on the game. A good quarter of football in that quarter a total of 14 goals were kicked which works out at one goal for every two and a half minutes port melbourne kick getters wilkinson seven kicks swan would be the best man on the ground with 12 o'reilly eight kicks and he's kicked three goals sandringham kick getters saru six sims is beating annanson around the ground with seven kicks and chapman four goal kickers for port melbourne three each to o'reilly and cook and one to kavanagh for sandringham two each to hunt chapman and one each to mailing adams and way team statistics free kicks for that quarter sandringham 13 port melbourne 13 port melbourne stronger in the air with 24 marks, Sandringham 14. Port Melbourne 7 4, leading Sandringham 7 goals straight. Favour. Up go the big fellows. That was Annanson with a big knockout from the ruck. And uh, here's the opportunity for Abaya to uh, move in on the ball. He sends it towards the half forward zone. And uh, Port Melbourne have every chance here through the agency of Christo, who in turn gets it to Anderson. Anderson here to the dangerous O'Reilly. O'Reilly shoots for goal, and it's another one up to Port Melbourne. They go on to eight goals. Annanson puts it to uh, Sims. Sims now didn't quite know what to do. He puts it high in the air. It's punched away here. A dribble off the ground, and immediately we see taken it away is Dermot. Dermot now to put Port Melbourne into attack up towards Evans, who fails to take the mark. Coming through this time is Anderson. Anderson now with his kick towards centre forward. Saru came out to meet the ball. Having trouble with it is Pledger. There's a hand pass out of the pack here. It goes to Christo, and Christo has put it through for four points. That's Jim Christo. And uh, we notice the big fellow Hunt out at centre half forward. And here he comes up to meet the ball. He went up, couldn't mark it. It's come back into the hands of the Wilkinson, who couldn't handle it either. Gilmore picks it up, kicks it towards centre forward. And here's Adams with the ball, and he's shot it through for Goldus Edwin. So the change did come off with uh, the big fellow going out to centre half forward, Rex Hunt. Reaching but not grabbing, this time to Saru. Saru into the centre to Pledger, and down, coming down uh, strongly is Thompson. 
Thompson up towards Cook at full forward and O'Reilly. They can't handle it, but it's out to Swan. Swan's got a clear passage to goal, but it's offline, I think. No, it's in. Ball had dropped in beautifully. Another goal to play. Is up towards Hunt, struggling up there, knocking it away from him. A chance to bounce on it by Hayes, working hard foot and kicking the ball back towards goal, but he might have dropped it in for full points. Andringham. Players directed to the broadcast box side of the ground or the base side of the ground. And a good mark there going up high is O'Reilly. And that could be the contender for the uh, Gillette mark of the day. The $50 in cash and at the end of the season could be worth $1,000. O'Reilly has four goals too. Lining up now the uh, fifth goal a long way out. There's his kick. Right down in towards the teeth of goal. Fred Cook is there, but over the top of Cook, in towards goal, and Kavanagh boots it off the uh, ground and through for full points. A great goal to Kavanagh in Port Melbourne. Yeah, a lot of money to find out what's going on there. I don't think we could uh, broadcast it, though. Grosher, a versatile, uh, a volatile player in the VFA, former Dandenong player. Back to the action now. It's a grab by Christo. Christo kicks the ball down into the scoring zone. Fred Cook in front. Oh, and a good uh, mark. Under pressure there to Fred Cook. What a very awkward mark, that one, Ted. It was an awkward mark, and looking back on Fred Cook's past three games, I think he must have had a virus, because the way he's playing today, that's how we know Fred Cook can play. Well, he had a lot of uh, pressure today, and a lot of uh, questions to uh, answer, and he's doing it. 3-1 now, coming in for his fourth goal. The umpire says, you've got it, Fred Cook. Another goal to Fred and Port Melbourne. Right from the centre of the ground. Gets his kick, his 16th kick, up towards the half forward line. The big fellow goes up in Adams. He tried to knock it down to the ground. Oh, here's a lay down was there. Kavanagh coming in towards an open goal, takes the shot, and he's put it through for full points to Port Melbourne to take them before they make. Swan continues to dominate. He's at the half forward flank now. And uh, that's against Gilmore, and you saw what happened. And Swan urged Gilmore into the free kick coaxed him into it if you like and Swan is on the half forward line he'll kick long no doubt lead up by Wilkinson ignored and the kick is long and it might be a goal it is a goal and Porter killing him lucky to pick it up on the rebound but Porter doing everything as a team and Swan into the forward line and the mark to O'Reilly I suggested before the game started that Port Melbourne had more match winners than Sandringham, and that's precisely what they have, and there's one of them, Grant O'Reilly. The other one was the player that kicked at Swan. It's 15-8 to 9 goals. Port a more disciplined team at this stage of the game, coming up towards half-time, and O'Reilly a chance to kick his fifth goal. And he has. That's Port Melbourne 16 goals, eight. 104 and Sandringham nine goals, a difference of seven goals, eight. Nine straight goals. The Olympic tyre scoreboard, 106 playing 54. Back to the action again, it's Jim Christo who'll take the ball in towards the forward pocket position and Demetrio Marks. No, it's not, it's uh, Thompson. Anderson. Anderson it is, number 38. A very acute uh, angle there. Although he has still plenty of space to look at and lining it up. Anderson now kicking off, screwing back just at the right time and another goal to the Barra. Well, they're being beaten in almost every department at the moment and particularly once that ball hits the ground. And that was Wilkinson and in the air too. Uh, Wilkinson across towards centre half forward and Cook leading out has taken the mark 40 metres out from goal right in front. He's kicked four goals, one so far, Fred Cook. Lining them up at the southern end of the ground. See if he can get that usual Puma accuracy as he moves in. On its way, right through the middle it goes, and that takes Port Melbourne under 18-12, with Sandringham on nine goals straight. Now, well, there's the aerial uh, duels being won clearly by Port Melbourne. All led uh, by this fellow going up in the ruck, Grant O'Reilly. 
O'Reilly uh, couldn't uh, take it away. Hayes is the player to get his kick in, but straight to Vic Annanson, who is resting in the centre there. Annanson towards half forward, and Bill Swan, who's moved down from the centre, right down on the half forward line, comes in to take the mark at the 34 minute mark with his 24th first kick coming up. Well, I think they've moved Swan out in the half forward lane to give him a rest, Phil. Might He's have been done in that. everything. <laughs> I doubt it. He's done everything, Swan. As he has in most games that we've seen him play this year. Puts it on its way, and I think it's another goal up to Port Melbourne. Yes, another one. They move on to 19 12. Found somewhere to be rucking, even playing him in the centre. He would liven them up a little bit. And that's the siren, anyway, for half time with Port Melbourne right on top. 19 12 to Sandringham's nine goals straight. Bill Jacobs. Well, uh, you shouldn't start a sentence with well. 31 scoring shots to nine is sufficient indication of just how good Port Melbourne are today, how much superior they are to Sandringham, and how many more match winners I suggested they would have, and they've got them all over the ground. It would be unkind to uh, harshly criticise Sandringham, but one must say they've got too many front runners who put in when things are easy and they're not putting in today. And Port Melbourne have done particularly well, they've revealed themselves as the best team in the association. It was a big challenge to Port today, and they've answered with everything. The game's not over by any stretch of imagination, but if Sandringham could get up off the floor in this one, it would be more than a football miracle. It's congratulations to Port Melbourne for magnificent first half of football. They thoroughly deserved their lead, and of course it would, as I said, be a miracle if they lost it. Ted Henrys. Well, what a great quarter of football that second one was by Port Melbourne. Phil, they did everything right, whereas Sandringham did everything wrong. Port Melbourne did not allow Sandringham to get into that game whatsoever in that second quarter. They beat them to the ball, and even when the odd time that the Sandringham player beat the Port Melbourne opponent, he was brought to the ground and held and couldn't get away with it. Their tackling has been first class, Port Melbourne. Sandringham hardly had the ball up on the forward line in that second quarter, but when they did, they couldn't do much with it. They're wasting their players up there, particularly Rex Hunt. I think they should bring him down onto the ball area somewhere, even opposing to Vic Annanson, who's controlling the ruck there. But take it from there, Phil. One man can't win a game, and I think it's a matter of the whole Sandingham side. They've got to pull their socks up. They've got pretty long socks. They can pull them up. They've shown us before that they've got ability, but they're certainly not showing it out there today. All right, uh, Ted. Now, this is where the interesting department will come in with the statistics on the game. Uh, because with Port Melbourne getting on top the way they did in uh, every department, not almost every department, in every area. Ian, what are those statistics? Well, they certainly outmark Sandringham. They've had 50 marks to half time, Sandringham 28. In that quarter, they kicked 12 go goals, 5, Sandringham 2 straight goals. Three kicks to half time, 26 to Port Melbourne, 19 to Sandringham. And Port Melbourne kick getters. Swan, he'd be the best player on the ground with 21 kicks. Wilkinson's playing well with 13. And Grant O'Reilly, 14 kicks, 7 very strong marks and he's kicked five goals. Jim Christo playing well with 13 kicks and Thompson a very strong defender with eight kicks. Sandringham kick getters, they're scarce. Saru with nine, Sims 11 and Gilmore seven. Goal kickers for Port Melbourne, five each to Cook and O'Reilly, three each to Kavanagh and Swan, two to Jim Christo and one to Anderson. Sandringham, two goals to Hunt, Chapman and Adams and one each to Mailing, Way and Hayes. Righto, and the uh, scores at uh, half time. We have Port Melbourne on 19 12 and Sandringham on uh, nine goals straight. We're about to come up to the richest foot race in the world. Heats for it anyway with the uh, Dandy Dollar Dash. They can win a substantial amount of uh, cash. John Russell will tell us all about that later on uh, with also the uh, car out there. And we should see some pretty good running uh, coming up. Now, there it is. Uh, Quarter by quarter at the moment. That confused me for a second when I saw the four quarters listed there, but 0 0. But 126 to uh, 46. Who would have thought that after the first quarter? Anyway, we'll be back for the Dandy Dollar Dash right after this break. Mailing out on the left half forward flank now. Goes bang, looking for the big fellow in Hunt up here. He goes up and Hunt has pulled out a good mark. He caught one too. Former cop. And he's kicked. Two goals straight. So this is the uh, first kick of Hunt since the first quarter. And he's as solid as a brick. As he gets ready now to come in. On a fairly acute angle. Big Rex Hunt. And he's put it through, I'd say, for full points to the Zebras. But from just short of the centre. Cook making his lead. 
Drosha coming in from behind. Cook getting a bit of attention, and the umpire has given the free kick to Cook against David Drosha. He's kicked five goals, one, Fred Cook. And if he can kick this one, Phil, it will be his 50th for the year. Goal, that is. So, uh, Fred Cook. Moves in. And he's put it through for another one to Port Melbourne, his 50th. Has taken the mark. Wilkinson not wasting any time. They've got their game flowing again, Port Melbourne, as Kavanagh comes in to take the mark at centre-half forward. Well, let's see if he can kick it the same as he did last time. He's certainly got the distance, not the direction. He's put it a bit higher this time, and the goal umpire moving across, but not enough to say it's a behind. It's a goal again. To our scoreboard, and it's Annanson doing what he's done for most of the day. Misfired for the moment. Jim Christo in there. Play on was a good call. Pledger out of the centre, up towards centre half forward, and it's O'Brien. In fact, he's a little bit better than centre half forward. About 35 metres out, and directly in front of goal. Chance for O'Brien to score for Sandringham, and they need it badly. And he's kicked a goal, I would suggest. It's a goal to Sandringham, and they are 11-3, 21-4. Then Mannix, and they've pushed it out towards their half-forward line. Thompson shows no fear whatsoever. Beautiful football to get it to Swan. And Swan out towards Evans on the half-forward flank. Evans controlling the ball in great fashion. And a flying shot for goal is through for a goal. That was a magnificent goal by Evans. And let's not forget the instigator of it, Thompson. And the Port Melbourne players are going to him now. Getting it out of the centre towards Wilkins. Wilkins uh, gives it back to Way. Out of the half forward line, Chapman, who's put in for Sandingham. Took a long while to get rid of it, but Way comes back to get the ball across in the direction of Hunt. And Hunt has picked up the mark. Yep. Obviously, the message uh, from the coach at half time would have been to move around a bit, and he's done just that. See the agility of this man. He just held it long enough, I thought. Just held it long enough. He had the two or three touches. Well, there he is from directly in front. And that's a goal. It's another goal to Sandringham. They are now 12 3. These again. Scott's there. He decides to handball to Hayes. Hayes gets it across towards uh, Chapman. But it's, uh, it's uh, Swan who gets his kick in for Port Melbourne. Evans takes the ball, lines up the big sticks, and puts it through for full points to Port Melbourne. Another major for the but I've got the feeling something's going to happen. I find it hard to believe that 18 men who would wear the Sandringham Guernsey won't do something as Wilkins goes forward. Handballs across to Marling. Marling in towards an open goal and it's touched. Or is it? No, it's full points. Sandringham, a badly needed goal. Well, as I was saying, I can't believe that a side that has performed so well and strung together eight wins in a row could uh, not turn on something, so uh, anything could happen in this last quarter. And Anderson coming through has taken it. He doesn't waste any time. High in the air. Cook works around in front, but O'Reilly coming in from behind to take, I'd say, the Gillette mark of the day at the 27 and a half minute mark into this. That was a beautiful mark. This is the third quarter. He's kicked five goals, so Riley. So O'Reilly now lines them up and Port Melbourne in racing parlance doing it on the bit. He's put it through for another one to Port Melbourne. Popped it through to Abaya. Abaya's about 40 metres out and he's popped it across to the half forward line. Captain and coach Gary Bryce who's been on the bench all day. Down to Bradbury holding the ball. Holding the ball. Ah. Three-quarter time scores. Port Melbourne 24-15-159. Sandringham 13-3-81. But now, Manick still battling on in there. Bradbury goes over the top of it with him. And it's in the uh, side of the head, a bit high. It goes to Mannix. Mannix back into the centre. And Pledger is the player to take the mark. Pledger now goes for the short pass. Gets it up here. He's got it to Terry Wilkins. And Wilkins now... Let's the play settle down a bit and comes in for his kick. Up towards the forward zone, race for the ball. O'Brien is in there, and also uh, we see Bell picking it up, and Bell shoots for goal to pull through to Sandringham's 14th goal. The handball wasn't good. 
and the umpire may be forced to bounce until it flips its way out to Bell. Breeze holding it up. The breeze sprung up in this corner. That's got to be a mark. I thought he marked the earlier one, to be honest. But uh, that was the mark. It's a wooden back he's kicking in today. Four goals, two and three out of bounds on the full, Ian Gibbs tells us. And that's the pocket he'd want to kick from, and he's kicked the goal for Sandra. Yeah. He's played it full back on Fred Cook, and Cook has played pretty well. Dross has got it up towards the centre half back position. Anderson off the pack, back to Cook, and Cook tried to smother when the ball dropped short. Kavanagh into the open goal, and it's full points for Port Melbourne. Port Melbourne with an advantage of over 10 goals. Annanson out of the ruck as he's done so often today. Maddox running into quite a breeze now, coming up through the centre for Sandringham. And Hall and Hunt, Hall thunks down very quickly to Way, who's running shot for goal, has put it through. <laughs> it out of the centre and across to Pledger. It's amazing that in a game like this, uh, Sandringham, you see they've scored 100 points. But there it was, with Thompson coming out from half-back to get it down to Anderson. Anderson give it across to Bryce. Bryce streaming downfield, a long flying shot for goal, and it might be through for full points. It is. So Port Melbourne on to 26-16, 171, lead Sandringham 16-4, 100. That's a, uh, 271 points. A lot of points for a game, Ted, although not uncommon these days. No, it's not uncommon, but it's a very high-scoring game, and uh, particularly from Port Melbourne, as we've seen them, giving an excellent performance here today. We'll give those to you later on if we have time. Well, back to the action, and it's Mannix for Sandringham, handballing across to Wilkins, the captain, lines up the big sticks, but uh, right into the teeth of goal, and a good mark to Hunt. He decides the handball across to Bell. Bell goes into an open goal, and it's a valuable goal to Sandringham. It's hit the post, hit the post, and through for one point. Well, as we said, it's uh, very cold here, and as you can see, there's Father Christmas. <laughs> Grandma, abominable snowman, that like, I tell you. <laughs> Back to the action and uh, making position is Saru. Oh, Maddox goes up and that could be a contender for the uh, Gillette mark of the day. Would like to have another look at that one if we could. Peter Maddox going up a beautiful mark. And there's another good mark to uh, Dermot. 12 minutes in that uh, mark there by Maddox. Uh, underneath the big pack as it went up with Dermot on top. A great mark to Dermot. But the one before by Maddox certainly a contender for the Gillette mark of the day. 173 plays 106. O'Reilly has kicked six goals three. There's another long kick by O'Reilly. The umpire moves across and full points to Port Melbourne and the Borough are in action again. Handballs across to Dermot, who took that great mark only a few minutes ago. Dermot a short pass. Oh, down to Christo. Jim Christo at centre-half forward. He'll handball, but uh, he uh, puts his uh, teammate Anderson under a lot of pressure there. Now he comes out with the ball, lines up the big sticks, and the umpire says another goal to Port Melbourne. It's across towards the centre forward zone. The chance for Sandringham as players are being brought down here. Peter Hall got an elbow in the uh, mouth then. Comes back in the direction of uh, Bell. Bell uh, gets it across here towards Buse. Buse shoots the goal and he's put it through for full points. Oh, it comes over here towards Demetrio as Holbert not in possession of the ball. The pick up by Bradbury. Bradbury up towards the half forward line. Evans bears in on it, taps it away nicely. Evans now with a long hand pass to Cook up in the goal square. Evans was fouled after getting rid of the ball. And the free kick will be taken by Fred Cook further afield. Fred Cook right in the middle of the goal square here. He's kicked 6 2 so far today, and uh, this will be his seventh coming up. 28-19 to 18-4 and Fred Cook has put this one through for another goal to Port Melbourne. They go to 29-19 to Sandringham's 18 goals for. Through for another point and Port have even raced the scoreboard. And there's uh, something going on. Demetrio and Saru in the forward pocket. This is the first time it's erupted since uh, early in the game and they're pretty keen about it. Like a dog and a bone there, Bill. Yes. But Saru, uh, you might recall at the start of this quarter, was having a few words to say to Gary Bryce, and Gary's in there chatting, and Fred Cook saying, break it up, fellas. That would be very wise if they did, because there's Demetrio want to uh, take Saru on again. Well, the sooner Demetrio gets that out of his system, the better, because he might find himself reported, and that would be stupid after such a resounding win today. 
Well, we have Bill Tony in there, the voice of authority. 29-21 on the Olympic Fire scoreboard as Port to Sandringham 18-4. Caulfield have gone down to Preston. Preston 24-30. A handsome win over Caulfield 12-13. No. No, we're only at the 27 minute. Well, mark. if you look at that clock over there, maybe it's uh, <laughs> gone haywire because the clock over there says nine minutes, but our clock says uh, 26 minutes. So it may feel that long, Rob. Yes, it does. Right. Well, back to the action and what's happened. Looks like a goal. Who got that one, Bill? You were watching. Jimmy Christo kicks another goal. <laughs> back to the bounce. One of our monitors got out. It certainly has been a dark day. Now it's Durbot with the ball, going forward again for Port Melbourne, right down towards Freddie Cook, all going up one-handed, would have been a good one if he could pull it off, now he's got the ball, screws it back towards goal, it's rolling in and it's a goal to Fred Cook, what a goal! Freddie Cook back in action. So Fred Cook has eight goals now, O'Reilly seven, Hunt five, the interest of course in how many goals can Fred Cook uh, get. Grabbing the ball now and going forward is Evans. Evans handballs back to his teammate at Anderson. Anderson lines up the big sticks, and it's another one to Port Melbourne. Port Melbourne moving on to 32-22. 114 compared to 214, so the margin is exactly a century. 100 points, the difference. And it's amazing to see uh, such large numbers of people still here, even though the... Uh, the difference is over here waiting to collect, said Ted suggests. They got well, a bit each way. They've <laughs> had a day out, and now they're enjoying the night out. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, you got one in every crowd. It's Dermot now, almost to the centre of the ground, kicking to the outer side of the ground, out there in the uh, the flanks. Scott grabs the ball, almost handballed to... It does now. 